Hey guys, if you're new here, welcome to my channel. I'm Cara from Cara Lee Ford Ceramics and today I'm going to show you probably one of the easiest pottery projects ever. Anyone can make these gorgeous incense holders. Despite how easy it is, you can create really beautiful individual designs for your home and to gift your friends and family. This is a hand building project, so no wheel required. You can even use air dry clay and acrylic paints instead of glazes if you don't have access to a kiln. This is such a good project if you're a total newbie to pottery and want to give it a try for the first time. Even if you're a seasoned pro and looking for project ideas or just a lovely relaxing hand building project for a Sunday afternoon. Before we start, please just take a moment to like and subscribe to my channel so I can make more helpful videos like this one for you. The clay I'm using today is called Silbeco High Firing Terracotta. I got a bunch of one kilo samples from a clay supply store. This type of project is a really good one for testing out new clays or for using up any small scraps you have lying around. The tools you're going to need today are a wooden board to work on. This one is just MDF from my local pottery supply store. A wooden rolling pin two sets of thickness gauges, one set of one centimeter and one set of six millimeter. A potter's knife, a rubber kidney, a sponge, a ruler, a needle tool, a carving loop tool for the decoration, but this is just optional, and a paintbrush. You also need some glazes of a firing temperature which matches your clay, or you can just use acrylic paints if you're using air dry clay. First thing I'm going to do is give this clay a bit of a wedge. Normally if your clay is new from the store you probably won't need to do this. I'm doing this because this bag has been hanging around my studio all winter and has frozen and thawed a few times so the moisture content is a little uneven. The clay I'm using is also quite stiff, which is better for this project than if your clay is really quite squishy. If your clay is very soft, then just leave it out of the bag for a few hours to stiffen up. Then I'm going to take my rolling pin and give the clay a good old bash. This helps to flatten it and gives you a head start for the rolling stages, which comes next. Next, you want to use your one centimeter thickness gauge one on either side of the clay. The gauges will help you to roll out your clay to an even depth. Roll the clay in one direction, then turn your board, replace the gauges in the same position and roll it again. Then we're going to use a rubber kidney to smooth the surface of the clay. This action helps to strengthen the clay by smoothing all the tiny clay particles together. Take your time with this. Once you've done one side, carefully flip the clay over and repeat on the other side. Next, we're going to use our ruler to measure out as many lengths of clay that will fit on the rolled out piece. I'm literally using my ruler as a template for the width, which is approximately two inches. The length you want is between nine or 10 inches. You can make them whatever size you want, but I found this length quite good to catch the ash of a standard size incense stick. I can fit three incense holders of the same size on this piece. 
the leftover clay I'm going to roll back up and seal into a plastic bag to use another day. I'll carefully pick up each length of clay and separate them out. This will help me for the next step. You want to try and avoid bending the lengths of clay as much as possible, just because that will help us avoid warping later on. Now I'm going to use my thinner gauges and roll them one more time. This does two things. This gives me a little more length and it thins them down to be about six millimeters which makes them easier to bend into the shapes I want. It also softens the edges and makes them look a little bit more organic. Now I know what you're thinking, Cara, why didn't you just use the thinner gauges at the beginning? Because it's easier to get the clay thin when there is less of it. Remember I said the clay is quite stiff? This way there is less clay to squish than the bigger lump and it's kinder to your wrists. Now for the really fun part, creating your designs. I find simpler is often better. I'm going to bend the end over on itself. If your clay is a little bit dry like mine is, you can simply use a little water, your finger and a sponge to smooth over any cracks which might appear. Make sure you take your time with this part as any cracks might get worse as it dries or in the kiln. The next thing I'm going to do is secure the end to the flat part so that it doesn't spring back. I'll use my needle tool to score the clay, adding a little water and then very gently wiggling the top part until it grips the bottom. I'm now going to add the hole for the incense to sit. To do this I'm going to check the angle with an actual incense stick, then make the hole proper with my needle tool. I'll neaten up the hole using a damp paintbrush. Then I'm going to add a crimping design around the edge, just by pinching the clay between my fingers and rolling it up slightly to create an edge. Lastly, I'll use my paintbrush to smooth out any gnarly bits or snags I might have accidentally made with my fingernails. The other two holders I'm going to carve. So these ones I will leave to stiffen up to leather hard for a few hours and come back to do my decorations later. For this second one, I'm going to carve a central section to create a design feature. I'm going to use the little loop carving tool and my ruler to carve out the middle third. I'm only going down a couple of millimetres. I don't want to weaken the form too much. For this third design, I'm going to go rogue. I really encourage you to try stuff out. Maybe there's a decorating technique you've been wanting to try. These are the perfect forms to do it. Take risks, find those happy accidents. And don't forget to add your potter's mark. Now I'm happy, I'm going to let these dry out slowly until they are bone dry. How long they'll take to dry will vary according to the type of clay you use, your local atmosphere and the weather. Here in the UK it's mostly wet, so things generally take a long time to dry out, maybe even a couple of weeks. Once they're bone dry, they'll go into the kiln for their first firing up to 1060 degrees centigrade. That's 1176 Fahrenheit. Obviously, if you're using air dry clay, you will just skip this part. To help save room in my kiln, 
I place these upright against the kiln walls. I've found this also helps to avoid warping. Before we get into the glazing, I just wanted to quickly tell you about Pottery Club. Pottery Club is my online community studio. It's where you can get tips, tricks and recommendations, not to mention personal help from me whenever you need it. There are exclusive detailed tutorials on throwing, hand building, glazing, firing, decorating techniques and troubleshooting. It's super affordable too. To learn more, take a look at the link below this video. Now for the next fun part of the process, the glazing. Remember, if you're using air dry clay, you will skip the firing and the glazing parts and decorate your incense holders with acrylic paints instead. First up, I'm going to paint wax resist on the bottom. I'm doing this because I'm using a dipping glaze and it's much easier to wipe the glaze from the bottom if it's waxed already. If you're using brush on glazes, you can just skip this part. We need to have the bottom, which is the part that's in contact with the kiln shelf, completely free of glaze, otherwise it will cement itself to the kiln shelf. Paint the wax on and wait for it to dry. I'm using a white dipping glaze for two of the incense holders. I think it will look really lovely against the dark rust colour of this terracotta clay. You can use whatever glazes you like, as these aren't going to be used with food, you can really go wild. These would be the perfect object for a glaze that's really textured. I will stir my glaze for a whole minute before using it. I hold it with my finger through the loop at the end and dunk for three seconds. I may need to fill in a few bits where the glaze is missing where my fingers were with a brush afterwards. Then my second design, I'm just going to simply dip one end and leaving the clay raw at the other end. This will work well with the terracotta being exposed, showing the texture of the clay really nicely. Make sure you take time to sponge away any glaze on the base. It should be easy to sponge because of the wax. I'm going to use a needle tool to get rid of the glaze that went into the hole. This is an important step. If I don't take time to do this, then the glaze will seal up the hole during the firing. My final design, I'm going to use a brush on glaze I had hanging around my studio. This one is called Turquoise Granite and it's from Bots. I used three thick coats and allowed each one to dry in between. I gave my incense holders time to dry out overnight before I packed my kiln and fired it to 1220 degrees centigrade, cone six, that is 22, 28 degrees Fahrenheit. And here are the final results. The green isn't my favorite, but I really love how the whites look against that dark terracotta clay. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to check out Pottery Club. I'd love to see you there. Thanks again, guys. Bye.